All right, so it looks like I'm live. I promised that I would try to do that today at five at, at the request of some folks that I love. I'll just sit here for a minute and wait for folks to come in. It's been a long day, folks. First day back at work after being out for a week. And so I am grateful to have a job to go to and grateful for work that I enjoy and Today was not an easy one at all. And not just because of the events of, um, of the last week, but just, um, just heavy, heavy burden. Somebody just joined me. Hello, hello folks. Can't quite see who has joined me. Say something so I can um, know that you're here. All right. I'm having people. Just give people a few more moments to join us, and then I will share some of my thoughts. What the heck is going on? America is on fire. What is going on? See, Marvin Gaye says, brother, brother, there's too many of you dying. Brother, brother, brother. So what is going on? What's going on? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. So that's the question, I guess, uh, is exactly what is going on? Like, what is happening? What What is happening in our world that, um, that America's on fire? James Baldwin had a quote that a friend of mine uh, put on Facebook a couple weeks ago that really resonated me, with me. And it says, uh, to be a Negro in this country is to be relatively conscious. And to be relatively conscious, to be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all the time. So that's the first problem. But the real problem is how to control that rage so it does not destroy you. I am a therapist. My name is Dr. Stacey Pearson Wharton, a.k.a. Dr. Stacey. And uh, for the last 25 years, I've engaged as a psychotherapist with lots of different populations. And when therapists talk about anger or rage, they oftentimes talk about it as a blanket emotion. And if you lift up the blanket, it might be not feeling valued or frustration or anger or disappointment or confusion or despair or um, betrayal. Just a, just a myriad of different things that you can find typically under the blanket of anger. And I submit to you that at this moment in time, if you lift up the blanket of anger of black people in this country, you'll find all of them and a few more things as well. Martin Luther King said that rioting is the language of the unheard. Or your grandmama may have said, you can't eat but so much poop before you throw up. I just need to say that while I do not condone the violence that is happening, what I do know is this that Colin Kaepernick tried to tell y'all. Peacefully, the brother took a knee and he lost his job. This is a result of not being able to hear what him and so many others have said over the years about the unlawful killing and murdering of unarmed black men. And so this is from about from George Floyd to Kunta Kente from Trayvon Martin to Emmett Till or Sandra Bland and even all of the other black men and women who have been unlawfully killed by unarmed uh, by that black and unarmed black and brown women and men who've been killed by police when they were not armed or mistreated by the police when they were not harmed. And not just by police and our law enforcement, but it's about the, the, the weight of what it means to be African-American in this country and how 
difficult that might be. I realized that I was carrying some of my own trauma and stress around this Friday night. My husband has a baking business, DavidDeliciousLife.com, and um, he had baked about five cakes that needed to go into mail, in the mail, but they needed to be frozen. And he wanted to take them over to the commercial t kitchen that he rents in order to put them in their large freezer there. And it was about 1030 at night. And I, what I was aware of was that I was in my heart really concerned about that because I felt like if he goes over there, he's over there at 1039 and it's dark and he's a big black man. Before you know it, somebody's going to accuse him of burglary and shoot him. And then I am uh, without a husband. Now, I don't know why I thought that somehow if I went that that would make it better and or different. But somehow in my mind, I thought that me being there, maybe in my womanhood would make it different. Or maybe the police might recognize me because I've worked with them a lot in the area. But, um, but, but it's just a small example of the weight that African-Americans are carrying, trying to negotiate this racist, oppressive, white supremacist system, period no chasers not kind it's what i think if you don't agree i'm good with it but that's what i think and i have i'm interested to know what people are doing to cope with this i've been doing a number of different things to try to help my own um, stress and worry about this i I find that I'm watching the news and avoiding the news and afraid that when I wake up in the morning that there's going to be a massacre of 30 people um, that have been killed by police somehow. And I, I see other people's Facebook posting about trouble sleeping and being concerned about the men in their lives. And I'm concerned about the men in my life, my brother, my husband, my sons, uh, my nephews, just the whole nine yards that wanting them to be safe and wanting even our young people to demonstrate and even to demonstrate in a, a safe way. And you know, what, what I worry is that black bodies will never be valued or that we will be chronically uh, dehumanized. And, um, and, and that's a problem. And what I know for sure is that this is not our problem to fix. What is not lost on me is that Yesterday or today is the anniversary of the Tulsa massacre. And if you don't know what that is, it's a Black Wall Street massacre. Google it, look it up, it'll tell you about that. But basically, what, what the, the, the gist of the story is, is that there, were, um, there was a town in Oklahoma and an area in the city that was full of Black wealth and productivity. And something happened and there was a riot and looting and fires by white men and women in that town where over 300 black people died and that whole bustling uh district um it would be if you if you're from philadelphia like 52nd street in philadelphia that it, it that it was bustling and it was um or 69th street for for other folks who are from west philadelphia but um but but i um and they destroyed it and the wealth was gone and the business district never came back. So they pulled away the wealth and took the wealth out of that city. And so, yes, I am troubled by the disturbances. I am worried about our young people protesting and I don't condone the fight that America is on fire. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. I appreciate you putting that up. I don't condone that. And I understand it. It is very, very clear to me why this is happening. And I pray that, that there will be some type of change that will come in this country as a result of this. One of the things that I've been doing is a little bit of meditating on scripture and other things to think on things that are pure and lovely and of good report. Um, of value and honest to think on those things because if I allow myself to fully go with all that is happening in this moment, it is it is I get full of despair that it is it is overwhelming to think that the country is on fire and that those other two police officers or three police officers are still out there and that it's only a matter of time whether that is in the next 24 hours or 24 days before there's another killing of an unarmed black person. Like I'm, 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 you know, that, that is on my mind. But 
what has soothed my soul, my black soul, and I, I, I want it to soothe yours as well, whether yours is black, brown, red, yellow, or white, is 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, and it says this, we are pressured in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted, struck down and never destroyed. Never, ever destroyed. Never, ever destroyed. So folks, this is live at five. I'm gonna to try to do this a couple more nights this week, but I encourage you to hold on, hold on. Remember, struck down, hunted down. We are not alone and we will never, ever be destroyed. Keep pushing, I'm praying for you. Make sure that you continue to practice whatever spiritual practice that works for you. But I know prayer will change a bunch of things. I love you all. Feel free to share this video. Bye.